So we're here on Waterfront so we can look at what small numbers of rats do. Let's start by looking at the AI aggro. He notices me. He's got a little bit of a, oh, there he is. He's now going to take the shortest path to me. This is just one, two rats. They're just going to take the shortest path to you, see? So blah, blah, blah. He's going to try to cut me off. When I'm close enough, he'll start executing an attack. His attack takes some amount of time to wind up, and then he goes for it. So long as you're out of that range by the time he goes to swing, you don't get hit. If you are, you take some damage and you get slowed down. Cool. He's got really four kinds of attacks. Vertical up, vertical down, stationary, and everyone's most favorite, charging. So let's start running backwards. We're backpedaling, we're backpedaling. Here he comes. Watch his attack. Oop, he didn't do it. There it is. Charging attack. Charging attack will close the distance, whereas with a normal attack, you can just backpedal before he gets to you. Um, the only issue, only thing I really want to say with vertical attacks, so he'll probably do this one on the stairs, for example. Do you see that? It looks different. It's kind of ugly. I find it harder to notice. People end up taking hits from it, and it's frustrating. So let's reposition him slightly. Maybe he'll do a vertical attack for us. Not really, but you'll see it if you ever try to jump when there's a rat beneath you. Um, okay, so what do we learn from that? If we're backpedaling, they'll execute a move that will go ahead and hit you. It's called running attack. The rest of them are easily dodgeable, even with just normal movement, let alone dodge. The other bit I wanted to point out is what you can do to mess with rats. So the first most obvious thing you can do is simply run. It forces them to have a significant amount of run time in between their swings, which decreases their effective DPS, but as you have already seen, it triggers a bunch of running attacks, so it's a limited strategy. Alternatively, simple dodge. It's not reliant on increasing the distance between. It seems to just be reliant on increasing your distance during an attack. It breaks the attack. Obviously, dodging backwards works too. You can also push. Look how much stun it does. The amount of stun you do depends on the heaviness of your weapon. I'll post the link below so you can check it out. Devastating Blow increases it. So like a big shield dead blow would put this guy right on his ass. My sword dagger does almost nothing. Um, the last thing you can do is hit them. Same with running attack, if I can get the trigger. Hmm. Okay. So those are the basic patterns. Um, the other thing, obviously, you can do, which we didn't discuss, is use your ranged weapon to control rats. Depending on the ranged weapon you have, this can be a major tool that increases your ability to control rats, or it can just be a minor contribution. I mean, if you're using handgun, you're not going to be spamming individual rats as they run at you all that often. But weapons like Hagbane, Fireball, Beam Staff, Grudge Raker, Blunderbuss, etc., all have huge upsides for mobility. They allow you to control rats without having to decrease mobility. All right, we're over on Last Stand. Last Stand is the perfect place to practice manipulating Rat AI. As smart as Rat AI is, it has one prime objective close the distance with you and beat you to death. That means as long as you can strategically reposition from one spot to another, you get to control the flow of battle. Again, you can do it for strategic purposes, getting from one spot to another that's more defensible for whatever reason, we'll discuss that later. Or you can do it for tactical purposes, using what the rat AI response to your movement pattern to manipulate them into some position that's advantageous for you. We'll discuss the details in a moment. So first of all, I'm just exploiting the movement techniques we talked about last time to get around the map. Uh, rat AI, uh, rat movement, excuse me, for slave rats is like 4 or 2, 5 or so move speed. Our move speed's 4 base, but I have the move speed trinket, as you see, so I move at roughly the same speed they do. But even without that trinket, with dodges and other good movement ideas, you can maintain the distance for as long as you need to, as long as you have a room to run against slave and clan rats. So let's talk about things you can do to gain and keep distance for gross repositioning. Climbing on objects forces rats to either do a rather slow get up and get down animation, which you'll see in a second, or go around the object that you just climbed on. Either case, they'll slow down. Let's do a drop down right here. 
they can't drop down. There's only some spots they can drop. And since they can't drop there, it forced a huge backtrack. Let's do the same thing here. They can't just jump up. They gotta come all right around this big funnel. I'll drop down here. They split, that's cool. So all of those things, exploiting get up and get down animations, will give you lots of distance, almost indefinite if you were keeping like this kite path. So let's get in a little tight spot and see what we can else do. We could try to push. The thing about push though, especially if you're not host, as many of you already know from bitter experience, is trading hits. You go to push and instead you get hit or you trade push for a hit and then you get slowed down and then you get overwhelmed and then you get dead. So push is somewhat unreliable with pings over like 70, let's say. You can try to do swings. Swings are useful, but you can only control so many rats. Look at this density. I can no longer control this density unless I stay on the very edge of it. So it's useful to a degree, and it's also weapon dependent. Some weapons are considerably slower. The best tool usually is your range option, if you have one, like Hagbane. I could literally control this horde indefinitely. I don't even have to reposition. Hagbane's control is so strong, you can hold any number of slave and clan rats coming from a uh, relatively narrow cone indefinitely. Um, other powerful tools we discussed earlier, fireball, beam staff, yada yada. As long as you have one or two of those on your team and you're a little bit coordinated, your whole team can use those tools to reposition. So let's do another loop. So we talked about strategic repositioning. Not so much about where you want to go, but some of the tools you have to accomplish it. Let's talk about tactical. So right now, depending on how I move, these rats will either condense and surround or funnel in a single file behind me. If I'm in open territory, they're going to do what they always do, try to surround. If I do things like this, I can gain distance, Ooh, not like that I guess, but like this, I can gain distance, but they're still funneled to a degree, or they're still spread. Watch this. There's only really one good way up, so they're almost all going to funnel and I can annihilate them. So often in Vermintide, due to limited ammo um, and geometry constraints, I mean, you can't always have a nice funnel like this, it's most effective to melee down a large horde. So last stand is no exception. This is a common holdout spot. So a holdout spot is a place where your group goes to hold out against a horde. So what makes a good holdout spot? Notice that the limited arc that the rats can come from, perhaps here and here, is such that a few players, you only have four, that can hit some number of targets per hit in a limited swing in attacks per second can essentially entirely lock down these areas. Every time rats come up here, they're going to get hit so frequently they never can get a successful attack off. Um, and then you maybe have someone here who can do a few targets. This is a good strategy in principle. It has some limitations. For example, this spot happens to be relatively safe, but if you're in a holdout spot, perhaps you have a huge horde in front of you, and a gas rat can sneak a hit in here, and it's hard to shoot over the top. Um, or you could be a solo elf, and that means you only can control so many rats at once. I can attack this fast, and I can hit two targets and three targets. I can't control a whole horde. So what chance does a party that's down a few members, or if you're trying to solo, uh, what chance do you have against a horde, and what can you do? We're going to essentially try to replicate the advantages of a holdout spot um, with limited capacity. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use mobility. Every time rats come up for a swing, as they group up to a density we can't handle, we'll pull back. This is circle strafing. They're going to keep trying to go around the side of me, so I'm going to keep trying to go around the circle of them. But look, I just densed everything up again. I want them to be as uh, loose as possible so I can fight two, three rats at a time. So let's see if I can find a way to do that. I climb up something narrow, they're dense. I go down something like this, mm, that's no good. How about over here? If they try to climb this, they can come up here, 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 here. So the rat AI is going to send them on a mission to flank me from every possible direction. So that means I get to play this game. We can also play the spacing game. The spacing game is where you continuously dodge back when they're in a narrow funnel. It's a lot like jousting, right? So you go forward and attack, go forward and attack, but instead what we're doing here is we're continuously swinging and then pulling back. Swinging and pulling back. We'll try this with a bigger horde. It doesn't work when they get to incredible density, 
but that's maintaining proper spacing and circle striping. Those are the two techniques we used. And again, we can use them because we can control the two or three rats most in front, and when their buddies behind them swing up for running attacks, we can pull back and control spacing. So there are never enough rats in front of us attacking fast enough to hit us. So that's one. Or two, we continuously circle around the horde as they circle us. So as they try to, we're outflanking them, and they never get a chance to get density around us. Everything to our right is following us, and everything to our left is spreading out to try to get around us. So we're always just attacking their flankers. But now they're dense up again, and it's not very good. So we'll do the same strat as last time. We'll maintain enough spacing so they can't block, break our block and put us in stun lock. We'll do this little move here to gain some more space, but they're still pretty dense. So we'll do this little move here, and they'll try to come from multiple angles. They'll spread themselves out, and then we will manipulate it and take advantage. All right. Okay, so apparently I can't talk and explain it at the same time. But I call that dodge dancing. Essentially, you're continuing going left and right um, to dodge individual attacks and to force their AI to continuously try to um, strafe you, to flank you on the right and the left. And by continuously going back and forth, they're not getting a surround on. You're also doing a little bit of back at the same time, so you maintain flanking. Um, so between those two things, you stay relatively safe. For the rest of the video, I'm going to go over a series of clips where we dynamically use the tricks that we've picked up, uh, either for tactical or strategic purposes. So we're going to start off by looking at using drop down or get up to gain some temporary distance to get a range shot off or a heal. I think I can get this off. Sounds like more strong guns. You can also exploit the same trick, uh, jumping up and down like this, etc. Up and over things, for example, an enemy below. If you're near the water and near the little ledge, and you can force rats or even the ogre to chain climb up and down to gain you as much time and distance as you need, basically. All right, so let's transition. We're going to look at supply and demand. I was doing a duo with Felix. So basically, we had an ambush hit us at a little inopportune moment. Ambushes usually are done in such a way that they're going to come at you from multiple sides and uh, get a surround on you, and we want to minimize that angle. So the first thing we're going to do is fight out of the, the ambush if necessary, or just push in a particular direction. And we're pushing towards a good holdout spot. So what makes a good holdout spot? It's like we talked about. It minimizes the angle you have to fight from. It protects you from specials by minimizing line of sight, long line of sight as much as possible. And it gives you somewhere to retreat, which you'll see is an, uh, ends up being important here. I don't care. Let's see, let's see. I don't see a storm. Ambush. So we're good. Okay, fine. Back left, back left, back left. Which side is left? Keep on to your right. No, don't get. No blind alleys. No blind alleys unless we absolutely have to. And like right there, I had that. You got fireball business. Go back, go back, go back, go back. It's fine. Alright, I'll use my heal. 
throwing. Really? I also want to talk about aggressive repositioning. So aggressive repositioning is as it sounds. You need to get from where you are to point B and there's stuff in the way from here to there. So as you do that kind of push, you need some firepower. So more people the better. You can have fireball with hag pain with whatever have you and you can push pretty aggressively. But positioning is very important as well. Um, there's two little things you can do. First, uh, the wall scoot. If you're pushing up along a wall, you only can get surrounded from one side. Um, if you're pushing aggressively, you're probably not going to have too much from behind you because you're moving with such a good pace that they won't catch you up. And the other thing you can do is kind of jump over obstacles. So that does two things. The rats are going to, instead of doing full encircle you, they're going to encircle the area around the thing that you're jumping on. Uh, while you're jumping, you have momentum, so it's easier to do things like push and keep moving. You can jump over rats as long as you're pulling block or push or some other decept during it. So all of these things make uh, the wall scoot, especially the wall scoot combined with the, the junk jump, as, uh, as we'll call it, I guess, uh, a pretty effective way to reposition. So I'll illustrate it with a white rat video. So that will do it for Elf and other Agile characters. I'm going to link to a video for Kirill trying to do uh, Horn of Magnus solo, Kata 1.4. 1, 1. He got pretty deep with the run. Uh, unlike my solo, he has using a two-handed hammer, which is a much more control-oriented weapon as opposed to uh, a mobility and kill speed oriented weapon. And it'll demonstrate clearly that you can solo with control weapons as well. You just need excellent timing, positioning, um, Anyways, I'll, I'll link it for a specific time point in there so you can see what we're referring to. Um, so next time we'll probably look at specials, storm vermin, ogres, uh, how to manipulate those AIs, how to dodge, those sorts of things. Uh, let me know what else you guys want to see in the future, and let me know if the pacing of this is okay. If you need more illustration, if I repeat it too much, let me know. Um, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.